Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. I am really excited because we're doing another segment of Ikea hacks, which is one of my favorite videos to film here on the channel. One of my favorite things to do, honestly, you guys, is walk around Ikea aimlessly for like four plus hours trying to find random things. People will literally see me on the floor taking mixing bowls and stacking them in different ways trying to figure out what to do. But basically what I'm trying to get to is I love Ikea and I love flipping Ikea things. So I have four really fun Ikea hacks for you guys today, ranging from furniture to decor, lighting, even a sheet set because today's video is kindly sponsored by Helix. I will touch on that in just a little bit for you guys, but let's go ahead and dive on into these DIY projects because they are some good ones and I want you guys to get some inspiration. I've had this recent obsession of watching TikTok videos about tie-dyeing. So I got this Fargmara sheet set at Ikea. It is a $20, 100% cotton sheet set. So I thought it would be perfect to test out a little bit of tie-dyeing and we are gonna be creating our very own tie-dye sheet set. So our first step is kinda gonna be the prep portion. So I went ahead and I folded my flat sheet in half and I'm doing an accordion fold, which is essentially folding the sheet back and forth on itself. That way it's kind of in a sense pleated. Then we're going to be taking our accordion folded sheet that we have here. I'm also gonna do this to the pillowcases as well and use some rubber bands to tie off about every three to four inches and you're going to want to make sure that these rubber bands are pretty tight because wherever the rubber band sits on your fabric that's where it's going to kind of resist the dye and that's where you're going to start getting your really nice tie-dye pattern so this is going to be not so much of a spiral tie-dye but more so of a blocky kind of shibori style tie-dye which i think is really fun and a bit more elevated when it comes to tie-dye i figured since we're having fun with this we can go ahead and do a different pattern on the fitted sheet so i could show you two different variations of tie-dye. So this one here is going to just be grabbing a little pinch of fabric. So as you can see here, I'm pinching the fabric and then I'm just going to go about two inches down and just tie a rubber band on there, making sure that it's nice and tight. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process around the entire sheet. So this right here is the texture you are left with, which is very similar to one of those Walgreens scrunchie shirts, if you know what I'm talking about. I have those in my head all of the time and I just had to reference it. So for the pillowcases, I'm doing the same exact accordion fold that I did on the flat sheet. And then just going through and adding a couple of rubber bands down this, you can add as many or as little as you want. Now for the dyeing process, you're going to want to heat up a big pot of water. The hotter the water, the better. So I went ahead and heated this up. And then I did also just add hot water from the sink just to kind of, you know, add more water to the mix. I'm using a dye color here called Taupe by Rit. And as I poured it in, I was like, why is this like a greenish blue color? I was so confused. So I just decided to go with it. It was the only dye that I had. So I dipped my pillowcases in and they started turning like a darker neutral minty color, which was actually really pretty. And I pulled it out and was like, okay, I could totally work with this color. It's very neutralized. Um, it's not super vibrant, which I loved. So then I went ahead and also submerged in the flat sheet here. And I let these so for probably about 15 to 20 minutes until I reached the desired color. And then I went ahead and used some cold water from the sink in the opposite side to just wash out any excess dye. You're also gonna wanna make sure to remove all of the rubber bands prior to putting this into the washer or dryer, of course. And this was what the results looked like on the pillow. And this is what they looked like on the flat sheet. I was actually very, very happy. I have no idea why they were not taupe, but I popped them in the washing machine and dryer and this happened. All right, you guys, so what you are currently looking at is how the tie-dye turned out. Now, this color does not look very taupe to me, and it's also extremely, extremely light. It's very tone-on-tone. -tone. It's actually very pretty. It's like a bluish-toned gray, but I want to go ahead and actually try this technique one more time. I'm going to get a color that's called Dark Brown from RIT, and I'm going to try it on another sheet set. I'm just going to go to Target, get a cotton sheet set just to test out if I can make it look any better. So I'll pop in a couple clips of that, but then I'll share with you guys the final final look um, using the same exact technique. Oh, 
while the tie-dye is washing and drying, why not talk about today's video sponsor, which is Helix. They actually sent me a mattress six months ago, and I've been working with them ever since. I took the sleep quiz, and I just absolutely love my Helix mattress. I was paired with you guys. I don't think I could have been paired with a better one, so I definitely do think the sleep quiz is very beneficial. It just asks you a ton of questions about, you know, if you're a side sleeper or a back sleeper or kind of what relief you would like and what comfort level you traditionally go for. And I was paired up with the Midnight Lux mattress, which came shipped to me in this exact box right here on my doorstep. I brought it up and all you have to do when you get the boxed mattress is just take it out and remove the little wrapping on it. That way it could start getting some air in there and it's going to puff up into something that you guys will never believe is a boxed mattress. This mattress seems like it was delivered on a truck. It never came in a box. I cannot believe how comfortable this mattress is. And after six months of using it, you guys, I could not imagine having a different mattress at all. And I also have to mention that there have been a couple of you guys that have reached out and DM'd me saying that you purchased a Helix mattress and how much you actually love it, which makes me so happy because I love mine just as much as you guys love yours. So if you're in the market for a new mattress, they actually offer a 100 day sleep trial as well, meaning that if the mattress isn't for you, they'll actually come and pick it up and you don't have to put it back in the box at all. So if you would like to try out Helix, definitely head over to helixsleep.com slash Drew Scott to get $200 off plus two free pillows. Now, when I was browsing around Ikea, I came across these little chip bowls. I believe that's what they are. They were in the kitchen section, and I also grabbed some of these wooden dowels from my stash. Now, the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is just clip off the pointy end of the wooden dowel. That way, we essentially just have some wooden sticks. And the nice thing is that these dowels actually match the little bowls from Ikea perfectly, so we're gonna be keeping those tones the same. And using some strong bond hot glue, which I will link the one I use below for you guys, you're gonna wanna start off by gluing the dowels onto the interior of one of the bowls. So there's a little rim at the top of the bowl and I just went ahead and about every inch I spaced out a dowel and you're just going to want to hold it as straight as possible to where it's kind of sticking straight up and this process is just super repetitive from here on out. So I'm going around gluing them about an inch apart and some of them do look a little crooked as you can see but that is totally fixable once we go ahead and glue it to the second bowl. So I'm going around and gluing them and spacing them out. Once those are all glued into place you're going to grab your second bowl and then flip your first one over because you're going to be finding it a lot easier to just glue it into the first bowl like this so you're gonna kind of get a visual of what it looks like here so the bottom bowl I am just gluing two of the dowels onto just to hold it into place and once your lantern base is essentially secured you can go ahead and then secure every single dowel onto that bottom bowl and this is where you can really straighten out the sticks as well so you can kind of push them and maneuver them to make them look and appear a lot straighter than they were originally glued down and they are gonna flex a little bit just make sure to hold it into place as you're working with it now, I just went ahead and placed this right on top of a lamp base from Ikea, which I'll link below, and that finished off this project. so in love with this third project because I love a good wall hook. I got this one for $7 at Ikea. It is just a plain pine wood. So I'm going through and just sanding the base of this because we're going to be painting the hook section. So no need to sand that. I'm just going through and sanding off the finish on the base. And I'm going to be using this wood stain by Ferrothane in the color called Kona, which is a very kind of dark, warm tone, but still cool, kind of like a neutral brown. And I'm painting that onto the entire surface of our wall hook. Now I'm going to let that sit for about 15 minutes and once it's kind of penetrated the wood I'm going back with a little bit of a paper towel just to remove any of the excess stain that was still on the surface. Grabbing some painter's tape, I'm gonna go through and protect all of that wood that we just stained with the wood stain because we're now going to be painting the hooks a black color. So I'm just kind of adhering this around the outside. That way no paint gets onto the wood that we just stained. And I just opted to paint my hooks black because I thought black and like a nice dark stained wood would be really pretty together because I'm also adding a little touch of gold, but you can totally go through and paint your hooks different colors or you can even paint them, you know, a statement color. If you have a color in your room, you wanna enhance a little bit. So I just went through and painted all of the wall hooks black. Okay. 
And this last step is totally optional, but I love the way that it ended up looking. So I grabbed a little bit of this thin washi tape and I'm just taping off either side of the hook because I'm actually gonna be painting a stripe of gold down the middle. So once I have the tape on the left side, I repeated it on the right side of the hook and then I'm using a little bit of gold leaf rub and buff, which is a nice bright gold. And I'm just going in and painting that little section, which is not taped with that rub and buff. And then once we remove this, it's gonna add a nice stripe of gold, which really looks like there's a metal inlay on the hook which I think again just increases the overall worth of this piece or the way that it looks you know what I'm talking about so I'm gonna remove those off which is super satisfying and this reveals your brand new wall hook which is perfect for the entryway or even in your closet or bedroom Fourth and final project, I was inspired by a YouTuber named Faith Lyric, and I will post her video in the description box below for you guys to take a look at, but she created a really cute side table with the Gladum side table from Ikea. Now, sadly, they only had the green color in stock at my Ikea, and at first I was like, you know what, I might use this green color, but in person, it was so much brighter than it appeared on camera, and it just was not the vibe I was going for, so I went through with a coat of black spray paint, and I did two full coats on this entire piece just to make sure it was nice and coated, and ready for our next step. So I then went ahead and grabbed some of this woven cane material, which I get at a local shop in Los Angeles, but you can also purchase it online. And I just cut mine into nine little circles wide. I didn't actually measure it. I measured it based off of the circles there, but I would probably say that I originally cut this to about five inches in width. And I cut a couple strips of this. That way I can go ahead and piece it together on the outside of the table. And you're gonna wanna soak that in water for about 15 minutes. I then went ahead and I patted out all the additional water and actually just used an iron which this iron we use only for crafting so it's like my craft iron I went through and I just ironed down the cane material which first of all sped up the drying process so much and it also made it very flat which is exactly what we want for our next step so next up I'm going through and I'm applying a bead of hot glue on the bottom and I'm gluing this onto the interior rim of our tray so this is just the top of the table the tray actually disconnects from the legs so I'm gluing this on and as you can see it does get very wonky and kind of warped on that top edge, but don't you worry, I'm gonna share with you guys how to fix that in a little bit here. So if you don't have a continuous piece of cane, you can go ahead and connect them together as I am doing here. You're just gonna wanna overlap them a little bit and make it as symmetrical as possible, or I guess as kind of perfectly overlapped as possible and just repeat the process of gluing it onto the interior rim. You can also use a pair of scissors or something to kind of press it against there so the glue does not get on your fingers, but you're gonna wanna do this around the entire tray. And once that step is done, I did go back and realize this was very, very tall. I don't know why I eyeballed it like this and was like, oh, this would be a nice height. So I did go back and cut off probably about an inch and a half of our material. And this material here, which is known as reed spline, is going to take our table to the next level. So I'm going ahead and I'm gluing this onto the interior first, and I'm going around the entire top rim of our tray table. And this is just going to really give our cane material some structural integrity. So as you glue this around, it's going to kind of puff out the edges a bit and just make it so much more even and symmetrical and not kind of warped looking so I'm gluing this around once you reach the end you're just gonna want to snip it and kind of you know mend those ends together as much as possible and the next step is actually going to be applying a second strip onto the outside that way we have a nice clean finish on the outside as well so using your hot glue you can just kind of add a 12 inch long strip or however much you want to work with press it down as you go and work around the entire diameter of your table I noticed there was a little bit of a gap between the two reed spline sections where the rattan was sitting in there. So I actually just went back with my hot glue and I filled in that gap. Now I did have to go a couple of rounds around and fill in any hot glue that might've fallen down or seeps down further, but I did fill that in and let it dry. And then on the interior bottom, I also glued on a piece of the reed spline as well, just to clean up the inside and make it look a little bit more professional. Now, once all of the hot glue is dried, I used a little bit of painter's tape on the rattan on the outside just to go ahead and block 
block that from any of the black paint because I wanted the top rim to really emulate the bottom rim so it looks super symmetrical and very similar to Faith lyrics that she created because I just loved her table so much and you guys this ended up looking so good in my living room so I'm so happy I saw her tutorial so definitely check hers out below I went around and I painted on the inside trim pulled it off once it was fully dry set it back on top of the legs that come with the Ikea table and that finishes it off Alrighty guys, you just made it through all of those Ikea hacks and I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did not know, I have so many other Ikea hacks videos here on the channel. I'll make sure to link the playlist below. I'm going to make a playlist for all of the projects I've done from Ikea because there has been quite a few of them. So if you want to take a look at any of those, I will link that playlist below for you guys. And also do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content here every single week. And I have a couple of really exciting videos coming up in the mix. So make sure to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and last but not least, you guys, do not forget to check out today's video sponsor, Helix. You can head over to helixsleep.com slash Drew Scott to get up to $200 off of your mattress purchase. Plus, I believe you also get two free pillows, which is a really nice perk. I use the pillows all the time. I love them. Everything about Helix is to love, to be quite honest. It comes in a freaking box to your doorstep. Are you kidding me? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. I have a couple of fun projects I'm working on right after filming this, so I'm going to dive on into those, but I would love to know what you guys are doing today. Leave a comment below. We can have a little chit chat down there and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.